Welcome. To Arcade Audio. Germs, welcome, welcome, welcome to Dilton Town Paul. I'm Johnny. I'm Spencer. Here on Dilton Paul, we go on Wikipedia. We click random article. We talk about it. Yeah, we do. All from beautiful, sunny Glen, Michigan. <laughs> That's right. We're still here. It's still late. It's still later than it was. It is later than it was. And um, you have the benefit of listening to this one week later. I don't know why that's a benefit. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, I don't see that mosquito anymore. There was a very big mosquito. We're here in the sunroom. It's uh, what? Close to one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's real close. Yeah. Real close. <laughs> it's Memorial Day. There he is. There's a big, big fucking mosquito <laughs> on the wall. We're both very tired. Um, but we're feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling great. I've got a beer. I've got a beer. I've got some, some Killian's Irish Red. I haven't had this in a, in a, in a while. Yeah. You've got some Diet Coke. Which I have had very recently. I've had six in the last 24 hours. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. I've had I've had a lot of this beer in the past 24 hours, too. We've been go-karting. We've been playing uh, catch. We've been in the batting cages. Oh, yeah, we did do batting cages. That I've, was so much fun. Yeah, I've never hit a, a baseball with a, a bat before in my life. I did it 15 times a day. Um, I, I, I haven't done batting cages in mm. 20 years. It was... It was a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But we were, we were doing a well. I did softball slow pitch, and you did a little league uh, fast pitch. Yeah, you. So you you were you were hitting some 30, 30 mile per hour underhand mm-hmm. lobs. I was doing forty mile per hour overhand lobs. Mm-hmm. Then you but, know a couple cages down, there was a little seven year old boy, legit hitting eighty, 80 mile, mile per, per hour. hour balls, just yeah, hitting every fucking one. It was awesome. So and he was older than seven, but no older than like twelve. Oh, you think he was that old? Uh, yeah, but he but he was matter. young. He was young, too, way too young to be that good. It was, and then, I don't know if you saw it, but he switch hit. Like he he hit like ten or twelve in a row, like right handed, and then like mixed up and hit the next like three Jesus or four left handed. Christ, <laughs> That's like it was crazy. It was so good when he came out. I like complimented him, and he's like, "Thanks, dude." <laughs> God, yeah, he was like, "Cool, all right, well, you got your life figured out." It was it was. Fantastic, though. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I, I don't know if we've gotten this one before, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel new oh, to boy. me. Okay. I'll tell you. Right. I'll, I'll read. I'll tell you the name of the article, and you tell me what you think. Bound. Parentheses. Fringe. Okay. Bound is the 11th episode of the first season of the American science fiction drama television series Fringe. Okay. It follows the aftermath of Olivia's capture in the previous episode and subsequent efforts to identify and apprehend her kidnappers. Okay, so spoiler alerts for Fringe. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. All you Fringe heads. From This is from 2009, so... Wow. Well. It... Uh, Along with the double agent, Olivia's investigation is hampered by the appearance Real quick, of... I hate when people do that, man. Like, I know, I know you're joking, but like, um, that movie came out in 1975, so you, you know, get over it. And it's like, well, dog, I was born in 88, so like, sorry, I haven't seen The Usual Suspects yet. I haven't got around to it. Like, yeah, that, that I don't know, it just bothers me. It's, it's like, oh, I'm sorry that that you know you have a time travel device and we're able to watch every movie and read every book uh, you know ever i think it depends if it's like just a couple people hanging out and it's like oh i haven't seen that i'd like to not know the end it's like okay i, I won't be a dickhead but right, if it's right. like i just see it on the internet all the time i feel like it's if it's like on some tv show or like a whatever yeah, yeah. weekend update or something and they mention the end of the movie it's like well that's fine because like what are you gonna <laughs> no, that sucks i hate that well yeah but like i don't know what, like I get so, that you can't just live in fear of like yeah. Someone ruining. can't make a, a Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis was dead at the end of Sixth Sense. Well, that one's joke. different. Th- that's kind of like a, a Darth Vader is Luke's dad. It's like well, there's just a few that everyone's just ha- you have to know. Do you have to though? That's a, do you have to? You know? Well, I mean, you could be living under a rock the whole time. I guess. Yeah. Well, but uh, if like no one, I don't know. Like what's a, what's a movie like that? Let's spoil a movie real quick. What's a good what's a good movie with a twist or something? Like Memento or something? I don't really watch movies. <laughs> are there books that are like that? Like he was dead the whole time? Snape kills Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I don't. Know. I, I get what you're saying. Everyone needs to chill out. There's a there's a there's a sweet spot somewhere. I don't know what it is. Yeah. There's a middle ground. Right. Right. I, don't know, I guess. I guess. I just specifically hate like 
Um, that thing came out in X year. Like you should have watched it by now. Or like people did, people did it a lot with Game of Thrones. It's like oh, yeah. these, these books have been out for so long. Like yeah. wh- wh- you know, those books are crazy to me because they the first one came out when I was in like fifth grade. No, it was it was like third grade, and I hadn't ever heard of them until I moved to Chicago when I was like twenty two. So I was like, where have these been? How did I miss these? Yeah, I don't know. You know, like it took them me making it into a TV show for me to know about it. Did you? I thought I because you've read some of them. The if Game not of Thrones. All of no, them. I've read every. I've read, I've read every one. Did you start reading them, them lot. after the show started happening? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't what, this, know that. The I, first season had started, and I'd seen there was like posters everywhere in Chicago. You know, because you know big market. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? And I would see people on the train. Like that was the year where, if you were on the train, you were either reading the first Game of Thrones book, which Game of Thrones, I guess, or you're reading uh, Devil in the White City. Those oh the, sure. Those are the only two books Chicagoans were allowed to read that summer. That's really funny. Yeah. I just got Devil in the White City. It's very good. It's right up your alley. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's it's great. Um which they're making into a movie now. Oh, really? Yeah, I forget who's going to be the lead person, but it's someone very cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It seems very much up my alley. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I don't know. But yeah, it's I just and they're they're very good books. You sure. should. I, I'm not going to spoil them. Don't. I, I don't care if you can. I'm never going to read them. I'm never going to watch that fucking show. Well, the, there's the, too much there's well, the thing that sucks is I, I le- like legitimately, I don't think George R. R. Martin is ever going to finish them, and not because he's going to like die or or something like that. He's not going to get around to it. Well, <laughs> well, because I think he's going to keep having to make more because originally it was supposed to be a trilogy, and he's like, oh, well, it turns out I've got too much material, so I'm going to make it into five books, mm. and then it became seven books, and I really don't think that's going to be it. Is it? I mean, how many have come out? Five. Five. Is it the point where like there's no way he could wrap it up in two books? That's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, like, what do I know ultimately? But it feels like you got a lot to write, dude. Think back to Harry Potter. Like, when you read the fifth book, do you think there there were enough loose ends that she... Does it feel like there were I, too many loose ends? I definitely feel like she um, fast-tracked everything with the seventh book by having Ron, Harry, and Hermione go do their own thing. So in the meantime, everything could just happen. That's true. That's very know? cool. I, I will say it seems like... She, she, she also like, I mean, the Deathly Hallows just kind of showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, totally. It's like totally. Do we need these as a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but yeah, it, it does feel like that. So maybe maybe Martin does the same thing. Where it's like, ah, eh, whatever. This yeah, this Deus Ex yeah. Machina. But she did. She did set up. I feel like she said a lot of. St- she knew what she was doing. She, she did it very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean as. Probably as well as you can write a seven book series. You know, mm-hmm. I can't think of one that's like tighter. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately. You know, yeah. I mean, I I don't remember all. I haven't read all of the Narnia books, but I feel like they're probably not that tight. They're not as tight. There's there's one in particular, the horse and his boy, that this kind of seems like an ancillary. Like, okay, this one too. Sure. You know. Well, and then there's like the magician's nephew, which feels kind of like oh, I'm gonna try and fix all this stuff. No, the magician's nephew was him, uh, like explaining stuff. Sure. Well, which is really cool. Or like maybe maybe making connections that like weren't in other books. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it is interesting to wonder like how much of what he wrote he figured out later to like yeah like sort of like wreck on it. Yeah. But there's one thing in particular, so I guess spoiler alert for the magician, magician's yeah, nephew. Here we go. But then again, I mean that book came out in 1975, so you should have read it by now. I mean, it came out actually no, it probably came way, out in the 40s, right? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, so when they first go through the um, the wardrobe uh-huh. uh, in in the very first uh, in the line of the witch in the wardrobe. Yeah. Uh, there's a like a like an English like a modern street lamp. That's very cool. Yeah, just like in the middle of the woods. And it's like what is this for? And you don't find out until magician's nephew, which is five five books later. That it was like, it was like ripped out of the ground from England and like planted there while the world was being created. The, and, so the 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 witch right was like in mo- then modern day England right. and, she, and before that she was in her own world that was like dying. Yeah, so she she like so, somehow gets sent to Narnia and right. like takes the uh, not even well, the whole lamppost. It's like the you know how she rips out have the cross like a, arm. Yeah, there's like the cross arm and she like rips that out and then gets sent to Narnia. Yeah, and but she's there like as. Aslan is creating it, so right. everything is just growing. Right, and as it, like, God is creating, like on the first day, created light, and so it falls on the ground. And because everything is so like fertile and growing, it right. just a whole lamp post goes out of the ground. Oh, yeah, it's so cool. I love that. There's no way he planned that though. He's probably like, oh, it'd be cool and whimsical if there's a lamp post here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what I also love is like 
how how they explain how the wardrobe cr- like became a teleportation device? Because it was made from a tree from Narnia, right? No, That's kind not- of, kind of, sort of. So the way that so <laughs> the uncle in in the or whatever the uncle the in magician the, the magician yeah the magician is this scientist who develops these like rings mm-hmm. and these rings teleport you to um, this world that's essentially. Uh, um, an infinite series of little pools of mm-hmm. water in this beautiful forest, and each pool leads to a different world. And so the magician's nephew uh, finds these rings, goes to this world, jumps into a random pool, and comes across the the witch's like dead world. And as he's looking around, exploring everything, ends up accidentally waking her from her like you know magical slumber. She comes back to his world, starts wreaking havoc, and then they're able to like pull her into another world. Basically, is how yeah. it works. So. Um, those teleportation rings they end up burying them in the in the backyard so no one can use them again. And from from the teleportation rings, the like a tree grows. Uh, so the the wood from that tree has the teleportation properties. I was close. And yeah, and teleports you directly to Narnia, basically. Yeah, yeah. And the magician's nephew, the little boy, mm-hmm. um, he grows up to be an, an old man. And he's the he's the professor and he, or the whatever the old man in he, the Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. Who who. You can tell, like he kind he he knows about the wardrobe, and just sort of like lets his nieces and nephews play around. Man, the freakiest thing about the wardrobe is like you go into Narnia and it's just like I've lived a hundred years, and then you come out and it's like thirty seconds yeah, that you're gone. Yeah, that but freaks is, me the fuck out. But it's not always consistent. Like sometimes it'll be a certain amount of time, sometimes it'll be less time. Yeah, it's, yeah, it freaks me out too, man. Like I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, because they, they they go in, they make friends with this guy named uh, Prince Caspian, and they have this awesome, cool adventure with Prince Caspian sailing on the ocean with him. They leave, come back like a year later, and he's like an old man. And it's like, oh my God, this guy was like a 25-year-old dude, like swashbuckling around with like a rat named like Reap a Cheap who like found the edge of the world. like, And then I come back a year later as an old man. It's like, well, there goes 80 years of adventures. That's so crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't like that. And then later, oh, it's so sad. Uh the oldest, the oldest uh, niece, can't can't go back to Narnia because she like stops believing in it, and so it's like, oh my god, like that's so sad. Um, that this is this is a sad thought, but it's kind of like, you know, I don't go home super often, but mm-hmm. every time I like see my parents, it's like, or my, or my sister or my niece, it's like, oh, you're just like older now. Yeah. Like, every every time it's like, oh, this is just like a little different. Sure. The last time I saw my my oldest nephew, he was maybe how old do you think I th- do we think he was? Fourteen. Mm-hmm. He was maybe six or seven. Eighty four. <laughs> he was okay. he was maybe six or seven, and I haven't seen him since then. And he'll be he just turned seventeen. In Jesus January. Christ! So in you January. could just like hang out with him now. Absolutely, I could just hang out with him. Yeah, share a beer with my nephew. That's so wild. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, how old do you think I'll be next time you see me? <laughs> Hopefully he'll be dead. I can yeah. stop doing this freaking podcast so late at night. Uh, if one of okay, here's the thing: if one of us died, mm-hmm. do you think that we would continue the podcast with a different the co-host other? or with the ghost of the person? I mean, ideally the ghost, but like if it'd, we, be, it'd be like a my unfinished business is my uh, shitty podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get to a thousand. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. This is like we're getting close to two fifty, actually. Yeah, it was real close, real close. Oh, are we going to do something for it? No. Okay. I feel good. Like we only do hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but hey, if you want to do something for us, uh, tweet us at Delton Paul. D a l e t t a n t e b l l l hashtag Nifty two fifty. <laughs> you know when we get there. Not yeah. yet. Don't don't. Oh, oh, this is gonna be a long one. Oh boy, do, that's a one o'clock. Oh time. no, it's just one. No, one I was o- like, it's gonna be so many hours. God dang. Um. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you could uh, you could draw your, uh, a fan art of what you think we look like based on our stupid voices. Like, what animal do you think we sound most like? Oh gosh, what animal do you think you sound most like? Um, I don't know, maybe like a possum or something. Interesting. I don't know, just like just spit bomb. Did you? I took my like Harry Potter Patronus test on yeah. Pottermore. What'd you get? Black cat. Really? Yep. Wow. What's your house? Slytherin. Wow. No way. Yeah. You're like a fully realized human. Like you know exactly what you are and what you. Yeah, and the thing is, like, those are the things that I would have said. Yeah, and then I did it, and I was like, yeah. "That's like when the uh, Sorting Hat like doesn't even touch Malfoy's head." It's like, Slytherin. Yeah, like that's yeah. you, man. 
Congratulations. Dude, you, have, awesome. you, have you done? I have. I'm in Gryffindor, which okay. I was. I I could have I could have saw myself in any any house. That's honestly. fun. Do you think you would have been a hat stall? A what? A hat stall. And what is that? That's where the hat doesn't know where to put you. Interesting. Like uh, Harry Potter was a, a hat stall. Right, right. Not, and we're both Slytherin. Like, mm, really? Um, Professor McGonagall was a hat stall. I didn't know that. Yep. Huh. Um, Herm- Hermione. I don't know that she was a hat stall, but the, she, she could have been a Ravenclaw. Been, I'm she, sure. He, the hat told her she could have been in Ravenclaw. Man, that's interesting. I don't think. Or, I'm or it asked her which she wanted to be in. Yeah, and she was like, "I don't know. I'm, I've, a dentist is my mom and dad." Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I don't think I've taken my Patronus test though. I should do. You that. should. You should. You should also. The the I found out about hat stalls. I think through the um, she released like three short audio or not audio books, ebooks oh, cool. that are just like little background stories. That's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I like that she kept she kept doing things like that, little little fun little things. Yeah, nothing like crazy. to build the world a little more. Yeah. Did you did you see Fantastic Beasts? I did. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it was, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna make um into a trilogy necessarily, but I, I think it's supposed to be five. Wow, that's crazy. But I do like the characters. Yeah, exactly. I I don't know how they're gonna do it either. But what I saw so far, I was like, yeah, yeah let's do it. Um, I was well, whatever. Spoilers for Fantastic. Well, Beast. yeah, you can't. You're. I mean, yeah, <laughs> sure, but also, come on, man. <laughs> this is the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah, this is the spoilers episode. Uh, no, like his whole his whole satchel of like cool animals is like awesome. Like that's yeah. a cool concept. Oh, that, I don't think that's a spoiler. That's, no, that was in the trailers. That's like a known thing. He's yeah. Got oh, good. good. Okay, good. And um, you find him in his little back. But there's one character in particular who was like a good character, and I, and I was worried he wouldn't be able to come back for the next movie. But like I think they'll 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 figure out how to do it. The the like comic relief guy. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was the best. I like him a lot. There was one character. There was one. I just wish Johnny Depp wasn't in it. That's all. Oh, I liked that. I I just fucking hate him. Yeah, and I mean, he shouldn't be in movies anymore. I think that's um, a fair thing to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't seen Pirates Five yet. We do need to see Pirates Five. Dog. Although I haven't seen the fourth one. I guess we're gonna do a little marathon. I haven't seen any of them. And the do you see the Pirates of the Caribbean meet the Flintstones? <sighs> it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I saw I saw the th- or I ostensibly saw the third one, but I fell asleep. But I got paid to see it because I was supposed to be making sure that there was nothing wrong with the print when we got it at my movie theater. Oh hey, sorry guys, uh, there is a problem. This movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no no Send no. It back. It was cool because I got my parents and my sister in, so That's they were good. they were just like, hey, you guys watch this. I'm gonna fucking go to sleep <laughs> and get paid. Uh yeah, I don't I don't remember that one. I know that uh, what's who was in it uh uh. Chayon Fat was he the uh, dude? Yeah, you wouldn't know, I guess. I know zero about those movies. <laughs> I and, like the first one is very, is very fun. I actually like the first one a lot. Barbosa is like the best. All I know about them is from the Lonely Island song. <laughs> That's a Pirates of the Caribbean song. Uh, not really, but yes. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I'll play it for you when we're done. Greg, I can't wait. Um, and like the ride, I guess. But the ride is basically pirates. Yeah, the, the ride's pretty like tame, really. It's fun. I don't know. I, I, it's a ride that it's, it's fun one to be of my teleported favorites. back it's one to my favorites. Yeah. Um, uh, this is apparently the last pirates movie, though. I saw I saw a commercial that was like a fitting end to the pirates deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I from what I gathered, Giant Up was the only one in the fourth movie. So like the what do you mean the only one? Uh, the other it, it wasn't Castaway, but with Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no Orlando Bloom. No. No Kira Knightley, I believe, is the, yeah. the woman in, in the movie. Um, it's just him. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny that you say Castaway because at one point he really was like marooned on an island. That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, gee, there have been five. He's done every boat thing. Yeah, right. He's walked the plank. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's yeah. waved the anchor. He's swabbed <laughs> the poop deck. Yeah, he's dammed the torpedoes. And, he's shivered his timbers. Yeah, it certainly has, yeah. Uh, I mean, for real, though, there like, how many boat tropes are there? Like, he's done them all. Yeah, yeah, he has, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, when you're the best pirate of all time, you know, you're gonna do everything, I guess. I mean, name a name, name a name a better pirate than Johnny Depp, the actor oh, Johnny jo- Depp. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually listened to a podcast recently, and they were talking about like the the like the fucking dopest pirate that you've never heard of, and ah, uh, but you have heard of him. Man, Pirates of the Caribbean fans are loving it right now, dude. God. <laughs> 
Um, and it, I don't even remember her name, but it okay. was like it was a woman, and she basically like just tore shit up and like yeah, yeah, got yeah. more loot and did it for longer than everyone else. And she like was a Bonnie something. She 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 may have been in um, the Assassin's Creed Pirates game, the Black Flag game, mm. uh, and yeah, and it was like she if it's the same person, maybe it's not, but she pretended to be a man so she could do all that shit. I don't know. Oh, she's she just a straight, up, straight woman. up did it, oh, and it was like that's tight. I believe she like paid all her pirates like a decent wage. Uh-huh. Oh and, wow! And like her her one rule was like um, when we go and raid places, you can't rape the women. Yeah, sure. She was like. A dope pirate, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I'll try and find this podcast so I that love I can that. like, like, it, it was fucking tight. Man, I mean, it was like you've heard of all these pirates. She was just better at it. Man, that's so, so fucking cool. cool. And then eventually, it was like, I, I, I think that basically the government, whatever country she was from, uh-huh. the government was finally like, you have to stop this. <laughs> And they just like gave her a payout to stop being a pirate. Oh my god, they bought her out. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, I'll go retire to yeah, the Caribbean or whatever. Yeah. Oh my god. That that's weren't a lot of the pirates like originally privateers who who were or maybe I'm mistaken, but people who were like hired to stop pirates and they became pirates themselves. That or, sounds right, yeah, sure. Or, or it might have been like people who were in the navy and then they just ran out of wars. And like, well, we're here in the Caribbean and we don't know what to do. And we got all these Start like of mini war. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to. I mean, that sounds really believable. Yeah. Um, I there's be... what there's like some play or something where. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Pirates of Penzance. Beauty and the Beast. What? It's like Gaston like came back. His, his whole deal is like he came back from a war and just has nothing to do now. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's it, it's definitely like more apparent in the in the new the new one. Oh, okay sure um not not it's not like super explicit but it's basically like right right yeah i've got nothing to do now because the war's over huh. so what wars when did this take place do you know 1600s i think beauty and the beast is sort of nebulously yeah just if old timey fairy tale i don't right, know that there's like right. a specific time but it's based on some war i guess i don't know but yeah <laughs> it, it, it's like well what do, what do i do now yeah with foo was uh, Lefou with him, or did do you think like he was like a buddy? In his, in I'm war? sure he was like his little his little drummer boy or something. Yeah, maybe Lefou saved Gaston's life. He's like, okay, you can hang around. He's the uh, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Whoa, fuck. Another Actually, pathetic life though, form. Yeah. What's your favorite like Disney sidekick? Oh wow. Um, well, now I guess it's R two D two. That's not cop out. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Who would it be? What do we also BB eight. Is way oh, better yeah, than R2D2. Yeah, yeah, you're totally totally right. Um what what are there? Let's maybe run down like Timon and Pumba are I was gonna say there. Timon and Pumba. Um Sebastian like Iago. Iago is very good. Um yeah. and I I like him because he he's like he's been a sidekick for the good guys and the bad guys. Is that yeah? I mean the cartoon he hangs out with Aladdin That's for fun. like no reason. That's good. Uh does Genie count? Probably not Genie. I don't know if he would count as a no, sidekick. No, I don't yeah. think so. I think Aladdin's um, the sidekick. Yeah, if anything, yeah. I mean, in, in Hercules, you got Pegasus or whatever. Yeah, or um, Phil. Philatides, yeah. Who who played Philatides? Wasn't it um, uh, Dan, 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 Dan DeVito? Danny DeVito, yeah. May, yeah, you may be right. That's a, that's a good one. I like him. I was never super into Hercules. I was huge into Hercules, dude. I mean, I was very into Roman mythology and all should, that. Should I watch it again? Do you think I'd like it? Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, What's his name? Uh, I mean, the... I liked the cartoon. There was a cartoon series. Yeah. There was Hercules, like, in high school, and I really liked that. That's funny. Uh, Hades, or what's his name? Hades? Was, no. Uh, Hades. Uh, is that his name? Yeah. Uh, he's played by... Uh, um, Oh, who is it? James Ooh. Woods. Yeah, right. And the, his two little henchmen, uh, Payne and Havoc, uh, maybe are their names. Yeah. One of them is played by Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh, and it's like classic dang. Bobcat who's doing his whole voice shtick. Oh, I can't even do it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Master. Whoa, that's a that's <gasps> good. Oh no. Like yeah, just constantly like yeah, like screwing up and then getting like you know, hurt hurt by yeah. Hades. That's like, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like the the um. The like narrators for Hercules are the muses, like the actual yeah, muses. Yeah. yeah, it's and they just sing in like um. It's like gospel. Yeah, it's like gospel or 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 what's the um, what is that uh, um Motown? It's kind of like Motown. Oh sometimes. sure sure. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I feel like Hey Hey from Moana was a pretty good sidekick. Uh, yeah, that was very good. Yeah, Her, Disney really does a lot of good sidekicks. Like. They kind of got their formula down. I mean, for sure. Yeah. I not 
probably my least favorite sidekick, but I know why they did it is the uh, little Olaf from Frozen, which I still haven't seen. You're fine. Yeah, I'm sure. So watch Tangled twice instead. <laughs> Tangled fucking rules, man. We just watched it again the other day. Yeah, spoilers. Tangled is the best fucking Disney movie of all time. It rules. Wow, all right. I love it so much. Okay, Maximi- Maximus and Pascal, very good sidekicks. You gotta see this fucking movie, okay, dude. Okay, I'll, I'll see it's it. It's so good. I'll see it. Uh, what about old school stuff? What's some where, like uh, like Sword in the Stone, uh, Sword Archimedes? In the... I loved Sword in the Stone, and Archimedes Same. is very good. Same, yeah. The uh, the little the squirrel woman falls in oh, love that with that. Made that always made me so sad. Very sad, very sad. Yeah. You know they when they were making Sword in the Stone, like like three different kids did the voice of uh, what Wart. Yeah, because he kept growing up. Yeah. Aww. So like, if you listen. It's distinctly wow. three different people doing the voices. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's something about that movie that just really always appealed to me. Like, I really liked Merlin, mm-hmm. and I thought it was so sad when he had to leave, but I was glad when he came back uh, wearing Bermuda, 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 Bermuda shorts. shorts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, like, Sir Hiss is a very good sidekick. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Lil John. Oh, Lil John is very yeah. good. Uh, and for that matter, Baloo, I suppose. Sure. You, I mean, I feel like Lil John and Baloo were voiced by the same dude. Yeah. I mean, they were the same character, except one was gray and one was. Well, brown. they were literally the same animation cells. Mm-hmm. Do you know about that? Because Disney had some hard times for a minute there. Yeah, yeah. very interesting. So yeah, they would reuse animation cells. Um, uh, probably, honestly, going back to Beauty and the Beast, like bringing it right back t- uh, to uh, the Candelabra Man. What's his name? Lumiere. Lumiere. Man, very good. The new Beauty and the Beast was pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, Lumiere and Cogsworth were very good. And Ewan McGregor was Lumiere, which is what? the fucking dopest. I got a lot of Disney movies to watch then, I guess. Um, start with Tangled, end with Tangled. Only watch Tangled. <laughs> Smell you later. <laughs> That's a big ass mosquito. Where'd it go? <gasps> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh. Where else? That big fucker. Where? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's not good. God, I don't even want to like. I know. Maybe we just leave it. It's not really doing anything. Yeah, but. Well, what? You mm-hmm. won't be able to get inside. That. that or mother, she. That motherfucker can open doors and I know <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you for playing Arcade Audio. Play more at arcadeaudio.net.